Welcome to the Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technicians. My name is Dr. Carol Mountain and I'm the board president. I would like to call this meeting to order at 9.07 a.m. First, some housekeeping information on how this meeting will be conducted. This meeting is being held via WebEx on Friday, May 21, 2021. I ask the board members and staff to mute their microphones to eliminate background noise, and when they are ready to speak, they can unmute. WebEx has a feature to virtually raise your hand, and I ask board members to use this function after each agenda item if they would like to comment or have questions. If we need a motion, I will call for a motion, and any board member can raise their hand, identify themselves, and make a motion. If you are seconding a motion, please raise your hand, unmute, identify yourself, and second the motion. I will take a roll call vote for each motion. Again, please identify yourself by name each time you speak so our audience knows who is speaking. We will take public comment on each agenda item. If you wish to provide public comment, click on the Q&A button near the bottom center of your WebEx session. This brings up the Q&A chat box. To request time to speak, make sure the Ask menu is set to All Panelists and type, I would like to make a public comment. Attendee lines will be unmuted in the order and request received, and you will be allowed to present public comment. Please note, your line will be muted at the end of the allotted public comment duration, which is three minutes. You will be notified when you have 10 seconds remaining. Your name is not necessary, but please indicate how you would like us to identify you. For the sake of efficiency, the EO will respond directly to public comment or defer to the appropriate staff person or council. For questions directed to the board members, I will either answer the question or direct it to board members. I will now do an alphabetical roll call to establish quorum. I will ask each board member to respond here after I say their names. Alita Carpenter. Here. Thank you. John Dierking. Thank you. Abraham Hill. Here. Thank you. Ken Maxey. Here. Thank you. Donna Norton. Here. Thank you. Tara Rooks uh, is excused. Melissa Rubel Calva. Here. Thank you. And Cheryl Turner. Here. Thank you. Based on the roll call, we have established quorum. Uh, our next item is introduction of board staff, and I'd like to turn the microphone over to Ms. Yamaguchi. Thank you, Madam Chair. And actually, as um, a small internal housekeeping matter, I'm afraid when I put together your script, I left Ms. T uh, Brown off the roll call list for you. So if you wouldn't mind uh, making a note of that for, for yourself when you uh, call the roll. Um, Greetings, everybody, and welcome to our board meeting. <clears throat> My name is Elaine Yamaguchi, uh, the executive officer of this board. With us today is Vicki Lyman, our assistant executive officer, Antoinette Wood, our enforcement chief, Marie Cordero, our supervising nursing education consultant, our NECs, Beth DeYoung, Jessica Gomez, Faye Silverman, Cindy Fairchild, Judith McLeod, and Charlene De La Rosa. Um, our legislative and regulatory specialist, Doris Pierce, our licensing manager, Shelley Brown, Ivan Brent, our supervising licensing technician, uh, Maggie Archibald, our HR liaison, Geraldine Marcino from the education division, and Jay Prouty. If I missed anybody, I do apologize. Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Yamaguchi. Item three is meeting minutes. We have two sets of minutes to approve. Minutes for February 19, 2021. Can I have a motion to approve and a second? John Dierking will move. Thank you. Alicia Carpenter, second. Thank you. Any discussion or questions? Are you, this is Donna Norton, are you approving both minutes at the same time? Because I need to abstain from one of them. No, we will approve the March 30 minutes uh, after this. Thank you. Sure. 
Seeing no questions other than Ms. Norton, um, do we have any public comment? This is the moderator. I do not see any hands raised in the public. Thank you. I will do a roll call vote. A uh, roll call to establish who's in favor, opposed, or abstains. Mr. Durking. Uh oh. Yes. Thank you. Is Ms. Brown with us yet? No, Madam Chair. She hasn't entered the room yet. Thank you. Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Hill? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Mack? Um, is he having difficulty with his? Uh... I'm checking right now. Give me 30 seconds. Sure. Thank you. This is Ken. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Norton. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Rubel-Kava? Yes. And Ms. Turner? Yes. Thank you. That's seven votes for yes, no votes for no, no abstain. Uh, we will move on uh, to minutes for March 30, 2021. Can I have a motion to approve? Yes, Cheryl Turner moves to approve minutes for March 30th, 2021. Thank you. Abraham Hill, I'd like to second. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Um, any discussion or questions? There are no hands raised in the audience. So no, no public comment as well. Okay, I'd like to do a roll call vote. Mr. Durking? Yes. Thank you. Ms. 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 Carpenter? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Hill? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Maxey? Yes. Ms. Ms. Norton? I'll abstain. Abstain. Thank you. Um, Ms. Rubelkava? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Turner? Yes. And I also vote yes. Um, there was one abstain and seven yeses. And we will move on to uh, item number four, which is fiscal budgets, updates from DCA budget staff. We have staff from DCA's budget office to provide an update on our fiscal condition and answer any questions that board members may have. Hi, good morning. My name's Karen Munoz. I'm the budget manager over at the DCA budget office. Um, I'm just going to be presenting to you guys the board's um, projections as of fiscal month nine, as well as the fund condition. We can go over both of those documents with you guys today. Um, the first document, and I'm not sure, I'm, I'm on my phone, I'm going off of what I'm seeing on my Excel document. Not sure what you guys are seeing, but the fiscal month nine projection, um, based off of this, and I know we met back in February, I believe, when we had fiscal month five projections to share with you. So through April, or sorry, excuse me, that's through March, 
Um, we are showing that the board has a reversion that has declined since the last time we met. However, we have trued up a lot of these projection numbers, um, these line items. Um, so we're showing now current reversion of close to $10,000 for the board. Um, and I know that that might seem a little daunting to you guys. However, I do know that there are going to be some line items within your um, current appropriations that we will find savings still in the next few months. Um, so at this point, we have trued up the attorney general line item to make sure that we are going to be um, so we're sufficiently appropriated or projecting in that line item. And so, and then there's other areas where I think in the parada section um, that we might find a few savings. So I'm not too concerned about the $10,000 reversion um, being too close to um, call for Elaine. I know she she watches this very closely. Um, but yeah, the, the board's projections at this time, although seem a little daunting, I, I'm working with the board every month diligently to make sure that they stay within their appropriation. Um, I, if you guys have any questions on this projection sheet, I'd be happy to answer any of them. I don't see any hands raised at this time. No questions. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure, Vicki, are, are these being shared on the WebEx, the, the two attached documents, or is this just something you guys have in front of you? Um, but I'm, I'm The documents have been uh, provided to the board members. Okay. Uh, the okay, so no problem. So we'll go into the fund condition. That's the next document. Um, this is also based on fiscal month nine projections in current year and in budget year. So for our current year, um, revenue, we are projecting a little bit higher than we were projecting in last um, board meeting. That just sh um, shows that our renewals are coming in a little bit higher than what we um, expected in February. Not a bad thing. Um, we are still watching the revenues coming in and then expenditures going out because the last last time we met, the expenditures were projected a little bit lower. But now that we are trued up our attorney general line item, we know that we're going to be expending to our full appropriation this year. Um, we are still showing a four months in reserve at the end of this fiscal year. Uh, and then next year, so if you're looking at the budget year column, um, those numbers are what we are identifying currently in the governor's budget. Uh, and then budget year plus one are numbers that we just, we assume are realized moving forward. So everything remains the same um, with an, a 3% increase in appropriation. Knowing that we will be making some fall change, uh, fall changes to the budgets appropriation will be adjusting the revenues. These numbers will change in the fall process, um, but we'll be working with the board at that time to identify um, what, uh, what those changes are going to be needed within the revenue side and with the expenditure side, we'll be making some fall adjustments related to employee comp um, changes, retirement rate changes. Um, and if there are any uh, budget proposals that go through or anything that would impact the, the board, those numbers in budget year, budget year plus one will adjust accordingly. So right now we're showing a, a decline in the, in the months in reserve, which is not a surprise to the board. And again, we are watching the board's fund um, diligently and working with um, the staff over at the board to uh, maintain that we we're going to stay within the board's appropriation and keep their fund um, within a two to three month reserve, which I know that there are some um, plans in the in the works in the future um, if this fund continues to decline as it, as it's showing. At this time, um, if you have any questions on the the board's fund condition, I'd be happy to answer those for you. Karen, this is Elaine. I wonder if um, if you could maybe provide some comments on the current status of, of the um, the budget cycle, since the, I know that the legislature is working now to approve the governor's budget. I was wondering if um, if the department had any any news or any observations on on the process. 
Um, so the 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 governor's budget, the governor's budget was um, an or was available July or January tenth. Excuse me. Um, there is with the spring finance letters that go out and any additional um, changes. As as we all know, last year there were a lot of last minute changes in May, June, um, as you know, even going into the current fiscal year that adjusted um, due to the pandemic. Um, there are current legislative actions based on BCPs that are going through um, and so forth. So we're assuming that the, the budget will be enacted by July 1, um, if not the week prior. So I, we, I don't have any further update on the, the process to enact this budget July 1st, other than I don't see any issue with the, the current budget as as stated in the governor's budget right now. So what we're showing in the current budget, governor's budget, the only changes that we'll enact is anything that happened in the spring. Um, in the spring for the board specifically, there were no spring finance letters. There were no um, adjustments. There may be some small pro rata ish, um, changes that if, um, you know, if the board or anybody was impacted by any of these spring finance letters. Um, but it, they, those changes will be minimal. Does that Thank answer you. your question, Elaine? It did. Thank you so okay. much. No problem. Are there other uh, questions from the board? And um, are there any other public comments? I, I see no questions. I see no hands raised out in the public for any questions. Thank you so much for this uh, fiscal update. Is there anything further, Ms. Kamaguchi? Thank you, Madam Chair. No, nothing at this time. Thank you so much. All right, we will move on to item 5A, which is the Education Division Report. Uh, Ms. Cordera, would you please provide this report? Yes, hi, good morning. Uh, everyone and board members. I believe you have two under my um, report. You'll have two documents. One is the uh, division report. And the other one is the. Um, the executive officer actions. That for the quarter. Um, so there's two documents. So you've had time to review those. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those questions now. Once again, I see no hands raised. Um, are there any up? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, can we get an approval of the EO program's decision? I need a motion to approve and a second, please. John Deere King would so move. Thank you. Get Maxi seconds. Thank you. Uh, any discussion or questions from the board? I see no questions from the board. Any public comment? I see none. Thank you. I will do a roll call and establish who's in favor, opposed, or abstains. Um, Mr. Durking. Yes. Thank you. Um, Ms. Carpenter. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Hill. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Maxey. Yes. Ms. Norton. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Rubelkava. Yes. Thank you. And Ms. Turner. Yes. Thank you. And I'm a yes. That's eight yeses. Uh, we will now have a special presentation from Beth D. Young, who is the lead NEC uh, presentation that she gave at the education uh, committee as well. So thank you, Ms. Young, for being willing to do this presentation. Thank you, Dr. Mountain. 
Okay, so good morning, everyone. This is Beth DeYoung, Nursing Education Consultant. Um, first, I'd like to thank you for allowing the NACs to share a few recommendations for the post COVID-19 pandemic era, um, for lack of better words, to the board members. Um, so as you all know, the COVID-19 pandemic impacted nursing education all over California in some way. So in most cases, face-to-face -face teaching was converted to online and clinical experiences became a challenge, like putting it very mildly. Um, as programs develop these plans to accomplish their clinical hours during the pandemic, the NECs were tasked to review all of these plans prior to the programs implementing, implementing these plans. So during this time, the NECs were introduced to all kinds of various teaching modalities. And um, with the current increased demand for this online learning, we believe there's gonna be continued growth of all kinds of on-learning platforms, various platforms that we expect to see. Uh, the pandemic required these program directors to be very creative and make instant changes to allow their students to continue moving forward, which I have to say they all did a great job. But it also, at the same time, it accelerated our conversation within the NECs about the future of nursing education. So directors, they have been asking important questions as to what will the BBNPT allow post-pandemic? Will curriculum revisions be approved in the future with these various types of teaching modalities and um, clinical experiences? So as you can see on the slide that yes, the nursing education consultants are very excited to discuss the discuss this future of nursing education. Um, together, we're striving for consistency with our recommendations when we submit a report to the EO or the full board with these requested curriculums from our uh, PT and VN programs that we're expecting to come. Um, we would also like to have adequate time to do research for best practices for these various modalities prior to reviewing these curriculum requests. So next slide, please. Um, during the previous board meeting, there was a special seminar webinar that was held giving examples to the board members of these different clinical experiences and these teaching modalities. Um, that this was during the pandemic that they were using these temporary plans. Since there was very detailed discussion held on these like various modalities, I'm only going to touch on uh, briefly just a few. There's many more than this, but just to kind of spark your memory a little bit. Let's see. Okay, so the first one is um, hybrid learning. This is when instructors are teaching remotely and also in person. This combines both synchronous and asynchronous methods. A significant portion of this course takes place online, um, but hybrid learning can also involve in-person and also virtual students attending that same class at the same time, or even watching pre-recorded um, lectures. Next slide, please. So the next one is blended learning. This is when instructors combine in-person instruction with online learning. So face-to-face -face class is only supplemented with this online materials. So FaceTime is not replaced by this online delivery, but it's rather, um, it's meant to complement the in-person class. Next slide, please. And then we have flipped classroom. This is a form of blended learning where the student is first exposed to new materials outside of the class. And that's usually in the form of maybe homework or activities, chapter reading, something like that. And then when all the students come back to the class, which live in person, the class time is then used to apply that material that was learned at home, like in the form of discussions, problem solving, maybe even activities, just to kind of enhance that activity um, and get that creative critical thinking um, item moving with these students. And then the last one is the virtual clinical simulation. I think this is what the special board session had a lot of information about, but this is when there are, um, this is when there are many, um, this is a recreation of clinical reality. So basically on your computer screen, it recreates the clinical experience. 
Um, this allows students to exercise their decision making, clinical practice, and communication skills in that virtual setting. Now, with virtual clinical simulation, there's a little known right now, meaning limited research about its effectiveness in regards to students' learning satisfaction, maybe self-efficacy, uh, knowledge retention, and even clinical reasoning. So these are just a few of the possible change requests for instructional plans that may be submitted in the future from both our PT and um, VN programs. So to be proactive, the NECs have been, you know, getting together and discussing this very important question, like, where do we go from here? And so we came up with some recommendations moving forward. And again, this is post COVID-19 pandemic era. So we're going to, if you don't mind switching the slide, we're going to start talking about the recommendations. So the first one is to continue to approve live clinical simulation for clinical hours in the skills lab on an individual basis per our current clinical simulation guidelines. So I just wanted to add that this is a practice that we were doing pre-pandemic. There are guidelines for program directors to review so they know what to submit for their request if they would like to ask for that clinical simulation. But this is live clinical simulation within their skills lab that they perform um, scenarios. Recommendation number two. Uh, this recommendation is to allow programs to request online theory, and this is for their current theory hours only, and this is having their um, synchronous class 100% live lecture online with no change to curriculum, only, teach, only the teaching modality. So basically, instead of being in class, the class would be online, and that is what most programs are doing during um, this COVID pandemic. So, um, but again, program re requests will be reviewed on an individual basis. Recommendation number three, this one uh, is to allow curriculum requests from programs for a change in their theory modality again, but other than um, the currently approved face-to-face -face classroom hours. And this is beginning January, 2022. And the reason for that is to allow the NACs the time needed um, for that research and the common teaching modality for VN and PT has been face to face classroom time for theory. And obviously the NECs are familiar with approving this type of an instructional plan, but with the vast amount of possible teaching modalities for theory, we would like brief time to collaborate on these best practices and uh, obtain current research search for all these various modalities as well as maybe obtaining information or assigning, for example, theory hours to out-of-classroom activities because these face-to-face -face hours will be done with other activities such as discussion board posts or replies, written assignments. So in order for us to be consistent, um, we would like to make sure that we have that adequate time. This way we can guide our directors better and when we're making our recommendations on board reports to the EO or the full board, um, we're very confident with those recommendations. Number Recommendation number four. This one is to postpone virtual clinical simulation curriculum requests for the clinical experiences. This is for pending further evidence-based research or information. So um, we are in full support of future changes in nursing education, and but it's also important that we are consistent and uh, with our curriculum reviews and to have that adequate time. But when you're looking at virtual clinical simulation, there's very limited research out there to show the effectiveness of that. And then um, with the last slide, if I'd be happy to help answer any questions or if you have any comments but again thank you for your time for allowing us to share our recommendations we look forward to the board's direction and guidance on how to proceed post pandemic thank you so much for that excellent presentation are there any uh questions from the board at this time Seeing no questions, are there any, uh, is there any public comment?
There are none out in the attendees, out in the public. Thank you. Um, we will move on then to item 5B, which is the education committee report, and I will provide this report. Um, the education committee met on April 19. Uh, the following was discussed. The rulemaking proposal regarding BVNPT scope of practice. Um, we had the same presentation on post COVID era for VN and PT education. And there was some discussion regarding the hybrid model face to face versus online learning and simulation. Uh, also, the possibility of hiring some VNs and PTs to work at the board as they would be current in the field and they would provide a different perspective than someone who doesn't have uh, those licenses. They also went through some of the programs that are uh, waiting to be approved. And we were told that the top 11 programs that have applied to start a new program were vetted and evaluated for readiness. And 10 of those were ready and were assigned to NECs. And that concludes my report. I believe that we are ready to move on to those programs that are uh, up for reconsideration. And I'd like to make the following note for the following programs. These are not NEC decisions. Rather, they are recommendations presented at the executive officer review, the education and practice committee and or the full board for action. The reports are posted on the website and recommendations may be updated prior to the open public meeting and all the board members received a review of each one of these recommendations. So. Um, we will start with Los Angeles Job Corps Vocational Nursing Program. Dr. Fairchild is the nursing education consultant. Is there a representative here from the program? Yes, there is, and I will unmute her microphone now. Director for the Los Angeles Job Corps, your microphone is unmuted. You may speak. You have three minutes. Hi, my name is Dr. Oko. I am the director for the Job Corps. And I am I'm, I'm going with um, seeing this recommendation. I have no objection to her recommendation. And I'm going to speak. The approval of so to um, request to for provis uh, provisional appro approval. Thank you very much. Uh, can I have a motion to approve and a second? Alita Carpenter moved to accept the NEC recommendations. And Cheryl Turner seconds it. Thank you very much. Is there any public further public comment? This is the monitor. I do not see any at this time. Thank you. I will do a roll call and establish who's in favor, opposed, or abstains. Uh, Mr. Durking. Yes. Thank you. Uh, is Ms. Brown is still not with us. Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Maxey. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Norton. Yes. Ms. Rubalcaba. Yes. Ms. Turner. Yes. And I'm a yes. That is eight that are in favor um, of this proposal. We will move on. to request to admit students by programs on provisional approval. Our first program is CNI Vocational Nursing Program. Dr. Fairchild is the nursing education consultant. Is there a representative from the program? Yes, there is, and I will unmute the director's uh, microphone now. Margaret, director of CNI, you're Microphone is unmuted. You may speak. You have three minutes. 
Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Margaret Sonder. I am the current director of the VM program at CNI. I did want to say that I agree with the NEC's recommendations and thank her very much for her guidance and support throughout this time. And just also to thank the board for the opportunity to have a, another cohort begin. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion to approve and a second? This is Donna Norton. Motion to approve. Thank you. Alita Carpenter, a second. Thank you. Uh, is there any further discussion or questions from the board? Seeing none, is there any public comment? There are none. Thank you. Uh, I will do a roll call and establish who's in favor, opposed, or abstains. Mr. Durking. Yes. Ms. Carpenter. Yes. Mr. Hill. Yes. Mr. Maxey. Yes. Uh, Ms. Norton. Yes. Ms. Rubalcava. Yes. Ms. Turner. Yes. Yes. And I am also a yes. That's eight in favor. All right, we will move on to the next one. Bernick San Mateo Vocational Nursing Program, Ms. Silverman, Nursing Education Consultant. Is there a representative from the program? This is the moderator. I do not see Dr. Larissa in the audience. I saw her earlier in here, but at this time, I don't see her in here. Uh, Ms. Yamaguchi, should we just keep going? And take take the vote? Um, I think we should go ahead. OK. Um, can I have a motion to approve and a second? John Durking will move to uh, receive the NEC's report and adopt the recommendations. Thank you. Alita Carpenter, second. Thank you. Uh, is there any discussion or questions from the board? Seeing none, is there any public comment? I do not see any at this time. Thank you. I will do a roll call and establish who's in favor, opposed, or abstains. Mr. Durking? Yes. Uh, Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Maxey? Yes. Ms. Norton? Yes. Ms. Rubalcava? Yes. Ms. Turner? Yes. And I am also a yes. That is eight yeses, eight in favor. Um, the next school is LAUSD Maxine Waters, Vocational Nursing Program, Dr. Fairchild, Nursing Education Consultant. Is there a representative from the program? The director is in the audience. I am unmuting her microphone now. Director Agnes, you, your microphone is unmuted. You may speak in three minutes. Agnes Padillo. Can you Is hear me? There we go. Yes, we can hear you now. Agnes. The moderator, it appears that the director for um, LAUSD is having some technical difficulties with her microphone. Uh, can we go? 
Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, good morning again, and thank you very much. My name is Agnes Padilla, the program director of Maxine Waters, Alia C Preparation Center. Um, I would like to say that I concur to the NEC recommendation, and thank you so much for the guidance and support of Dr. Fairchild. She is very phenomenal, and we would like to take this opportunity also to thank you for all the guidance, and um, we're very happy to do the admission for another class. Thank you so much. Uh, can I have a motion to approve and a second? So moved. This is Ken Maxey. Thank you. Daryl Turner seconds. Thank you. Any discussion or questions? Any public comment? I see none at the time. Thank you. I will do a roll call to establish who's in favor, opposed, or abstains. Mr. Durkin. Yes. Ms. Carpenter. Yes. Mr. Hill. Yes. Mr. Maxey. Yes. Ms. Norton. Yes. Ms. Rubelkova. Yes. Ms. Turner. Yes. Um, also, a yes, that is eight in favor. We will now move on to the University of Antelope Valley Vocational Nursing Program, Ms. Della Rosa, Nursing Education Consultant. Is there a representative from the program? There is Director Alvi Anchata is in the is in the audience. I will unmute her microphone now. Alvi, your microphone is unmuted. You may speak and you have three minutes. Thank you. Um, good morning, moderator. Uh, good morning, um, Ms. Yamaguchi, um, Dr. Mountain, and all our, our board of directors. Good morning, Ms. Cordero, and all of our nurse consultants. Um, special thank you to um, uh, Ms. De La Rosa, our new um, consultant, for her time and attention and guidance through um, going through the process. Uh, we thank you very much for another opportunity to start another cohort. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve and a second? This is Cheryl Turner. I move that we adopt or accept the report of the NEC and adopt the recommendations regarding University of Intel Valley. Thank you. Hey, Brian Mail, I'd like to second. Thank you. Any discussion or questions from the board? Seeing none, uh, any public comment? I see none. Thank you. I will do a roll call vote to establish who's in favor, opposed, or abstains. Mr. Durkin. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Maxey? Yes. Ms. Norton? Yes. You? Ms. Rubelkava? Yes. Ms. Turner? Yes. And I am also a yes. That is eight in favor. Okay. Uh, the next one is the Institute of Technology Modesto Vocational Nursing Program. Dr. Fairchild, Nursing Education Consultant. Is there a representative from the program? Um, give me one moment. No worries. Dr. Mountain, I believe that we have skipped. Did we skip Angela's? Yes, we did. That was my fault. Hang on, we'll go back. No worries. Okay. Angela's vocational nursing program, Ms. Delarosa, education consultant. 
Uh, is there a representative from the program? I see a Scott Coward. Um, I am going to unmute his microphone. Yes, that's me. I'm a representative yeah. of Angeles Institute. Can you hear me? Yes, we can yes, hear you. Can. Okay. Um, I just needed to ask one thing. I'm looking at the the agenda here, and it looks like I thought it says reconsideration of provisional approval. I thought we were being removed from provisional approval and being given full approval with a request to admit students. So I just wanted to clarify what I'm agreeing with. Is Ms. Della Rosa here to clarify? Yes, um, good morning. Um, Scott, that is um, an, uh, the, the report part that I sent you. Um, it is the approval for the full uh, approval of your program. Great, I just wanted to make sure. I was gonna get in trouble with our director of nursing, if not. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so um, then I, we, Angels Institute, we do agree with um, the NEC's recommendation for our program. Um, I would like our director would like to apologize for not being here. Um, Ms. Brandy Coward, she's uh, got called for her military service uh, this week of all weeks. So uh, I am the assistant director of the program. My name is Scott Coward. Uh, this has been a long time coming. I'd really like to thank all of the board members and all of the consultants that we've had over the time period. Um, it's been a, a lot of work, but um, I think we're um, on the right path now, and we're looking forward to continuing that in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve and a second? John Derricking will so move. Thank you. Alita Carpenter, a second. Thank you. Any discussion or questions? Any public comment? I do see one person's hand raised, Kathy Calvin. I will unmute her microphone now. Technology night. Kathy, Wait. your microphone and you have three minutes. Oh, okay. Um, I just had raised my hand uh, because you were you called my institute out of order. So that's why, I, because I was trying to get unmuted, but no, I don't, I don't have okay. a question. Thank you. All right. Uh, I will do a roll call and establish who is in favor, opposed, or abstains for Angeles Institute. Uh, Mr. Durkin. Yes. Thank you. M Ms. Carpenter. Yes. Mr. Hill. Yes. Mr. Maxey. Yes. Ms. Norton. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Rubelkova. Melissa? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Turner? Yes. And I am also a yes. That is eight in favor. All right. Now we will move on to Institute of Technology, Modesto, Vocational Nursing Program, Dr. Fairchild, Nursing Education Consultant. Is there a representative from the program? There is. I will unmute Kathy Calvin at this time. Calvin, Director of Nursing for Institute of Technology, Modesto. I agree with Dr. Fair, Fairchild's uh, recommendation to be removed from the provisional status and also approve for our next class. I want, want to thank her for all of her efforts and assistance during this time. And we're very excited um, to be at this point. Uh, thank you so much, board members. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion to approve and a second? This is Donna Norton, no motion to approve. This is Cheryl. John Turner Deere will second. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Cheryl Turner seconds. Thank you. Any discussion or questions? 
Any further public comment? I see no public comments at this time. Thank you. I will do a roll call and establish who's in favor, opposed, or abstains. Mr. Durkin. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Carpenter. Yes. Mr. Hill. Yes. Mr. Maxey. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Norton. Yes. Ms. Rubalcava. Yes. Ms. Turner. Yes. And I am a yes. That is eight yeses. All right. A request to admit and curriculum change. Our first school is Northwest College Riverside Vocational Nursing Program. Dr. McLeod, nursing education consultant. Is there a representative from the program? I do not see um, Dr. Silky in the audience. All right. Uh, can I have a motion to approve and a second? John Deere King will so move. Thank you. Hey, Brian, no, a second. Thank you. Um, any questions or discussion from the board? Seeing none, any public comment? I see none at this time. Thank you. I will do a roll call and establish who's in favor, opposed, or abstains. Mr. Durkin. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Carpenter. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Hill. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Maxey. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Norton. Yes. Ms. Rubalcalva. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Turner. Yes. And I am a yes. That is eight yeses. We will move on to our final school, um, which is Premier Career College Vocational Nursing Program, Dr. Fairchild, Nursing Education Consultant. Is there a representative from this program? I do not see the Director Ophelia out in the audience. Um, Dr. Fairchild, is there anybody else that you would know of that would be, because um, I, I see no other hands raised. It should be Bernie. There, I see him. I see him. I'm unmuting his microphone okay. now. Thank you, Vicki. You're welcome. Bernie, your microphone is unmuted. You may speak. You have three minutes. Hi, good, uh, good morning to the board, and I feel honored to be here. Uh, first of all, I concur with all the recommendations of Dr. Fairchild, um, and I would like to express our deepest gratitude for her guidance and time to make sure that our program is in compliance with all the um, requirements and policies of the board. And I look forward to working with Dr. Fairchild again as she helps us um, get our next classes approved. Thank you so much. Can I have a motion to approve in a second? This is Donna Norton, motion to approve. Thank you. And Maxi second. Thank you. Any discussion from the board? Seeing none, uh, any comments from the public? I see none at this time. Thank you. I will do a roll call and establish who's in favor, opposed, or abstains. Um, Mr. Durkin. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Carpenter. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Hill. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Maxey. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Norton. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Rubalcava. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Turner. Yes. Thank you. And I am a yes. That is eight yeses. So thank you. That is the end of our uh, schools. And we will move on to item six, which is the executive officer's report. 
Ms. Yamaguchi, please provide your report. Thank you, Madam Chair and board members. Um, uh, the written report, of course, is in your packet. And if, if there are any specific questions on that, I'd be happy to answer them now just to update us on our, our, our sunset status. Um, I believe we mentioned that we do have a sunset bill introduced. It's AB 1536. At this point in time, it's been passed out of the Assembly Appropriations Committee, which means that it'll be on the floor and probably moving quite quickly over to the Senate for our action. And this, of course, would be when we believe we will start seeing some actual uh, conversation, discussion, um, maybe even negotiation to um, to amend the bill to uh, include all the policy areas we've been discussing. As you know, some of the things we, we will and have requested um, top of the list, of course, would be our, our fee policy for programs, um, then a few other things like site and fine authority for, for the NECs and the, the programs, email authorization to make that our prime consider um, communication with our, our licensees. And, um, and as you know, um, from yesterday, um, and oh, by the way, let me let me backtrack a little bit um, <clears throat> because I, I, I wanted to thank you all again and thank the um, the program representatives and the folks who spoke from, for the panel yesterday. I thought that was a terrific presentation. I, I, I know I learned a lot too, and um, we really appreciated people's very, very thoughtful uh, comments and recommendations and suggestions. And, um, and actually on a personal note, I really, really appreciated all the uh, the expressions of appreciation and, and value for the NECs because they work so hard and they're just such a such a wonderful team. So with that, though, let me say that I think the the centerpiece really for us moving ahead is going to be that um, really that reworking of our program approval process. Um, I know that the board saw in the initial sunset report uh, response, um, our, 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 our global thoughts on how to kind of sharpen up the process and really, I think, um, move more of it to the front of the line rather than wait to the end. And, and then we believe that um, if we were allowed to move forward with this, you know, we, we did, um, we, we have, and we will continue to um, recommend and, and request of the legislature that we'd be authorized to move ahead with a uh, pilot program to be able to do this right away without waiting for um, additional rulemaking, additional uh, statutory authority. So in the so in the meantime, then what's going to happen here? Um, we'll we'll be working with the um, the draft you saw um, and our own working drafts and and some of the comments and input we've had from from yesterday and from today. We'll be working with council, both our, our general counsel, Mr. Swenson, and our regulatory counsel, Ms. Tatayan, to um to really I think look through the changes that we want to make and assess what requires statutory authority, what requires rulemaking, um, what could be achieved by uh, board authorization, um, and essentially what will be able to move very quickly, and what will take a little bit of work. But as I said. What we want to work on at this point is is really drafting out some suggested um, bill language to authorize a pilot program. Um, I think what um, I would suggest us doing at this point is continuing that process, um, polishing up a draft. I'd like to probably send it um, offline to our Legend Regs committee and and the chair. Um, for some comments on the draft and then start working with the, the legislative committee to do some back and forth. But I, we will, of course, need to bring a draft, a, a final draft back to the board for um, final approval. Um, the hearing itself, um, as you know, that was the, that was our hearing. So we have not been notified that there would be any um, any follow up hearings for us. Although I did want to mention that. Um, our sister board, the Board of Registered Nursing, had its second hearing um, this week, and they've had some, they had some really interesting conversations um, with regard to faculty approval, and they also had um, a representative from NCSBN 
to discuss the pros and cons while well, they were mostly pros of um, the licensing compact. Um, I was a little disappointed to note that in that presentation, the, um, the BRN executive officer was not part of the panel and wasn't then able to present some of the, the concerns that they would have as a regulatory body um, over the enactment of that bill. So not to, to preempt Mr. Deerking, um, the the nursing licensure compact bill was introduced this year. It's, um, it's AB 410, um, but it has not moved yet. Um, the authors indicated that this will be a two year bill. So if it moves, it will be moving very quickly, but not until January. Um, but as I said, this this process of, of amending in a sunset bill, it's um, <laughs> very, very slow and then very, very fast. And what I, as I said, I think it's fair for us to assume that they will um, make all the amendments they want to make toward the end of the session. So I would think again, um, early August. And and then move it to the floor and, and then hence to the governor's office. Um, with that, let me ask for any questions or comments. I see no raised hands. Great. I see nothing in the public. Great. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. That would be my report. Thank you so much for that report. Uh, the executive committee report. Uh, this is also the notes from the meetings are in the packet. Are there any questions from the board members about those notes? Seeing no questions, uh, we will move on to item seven. We have an update from the Department of Consumer Affairs. Affairs. Ms. Brianna Miller, the Assistant Deputy Director for the Board and Bureau of Relations is joining us to provide an update. Welcome. Good morning. Can you all hear me okay? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, wonderful. Okay. All right. Well, um, good, good morning, Board President Mountain and Board Members. I'm Brianna Miller with the Department of Consumer Affairs and Board and Bureau of Relations. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to provide a department update to your board. Um, I would first like to welcome uh, Member Brown as the newest public member of the board. Um, we uh, would like to congratulate her on her appointment and thank her for her willingness to serve. With Ms. Brown's appointment, we know that the board only has one more vacancy to fill, a public member appoint to be appointed by the governor. Any in interested individual should apply through the governor's appointments website or access the application through the board member resources page. So I'd like to start my report with updates on public health guidance and masking. On May 13th, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, CDC, announced additional updates to mask guidelines, including various circumstances when masks are not fully required, or, pardon me, are not required for fully vaccinated individuals. California will keep existing mask guidance in place until June 15th when it aims to fully reopen the economy. Employees and visitors must still wear masks while at DCA. Um, and while more than 15 million Californians are fully vaccinated, there are still many others that are not and the threat of variants remains. Californians need to remain vigilant and continue public health prevention measures like wearing masks when appropriate and getting vaccinated. DCA will continue to communicate updated guidance to its boards and bureaus. Then moving on to COVID-19 and our board meetings. DCA is receiving many questions about when and how boards will be able to meet again in person. Unfortunately, I don't have a definitive answer for you today, but I would like to offer some clarification. As you know, the ability of the board to meet remotely is tied to the governor's executive orders and the state of emergency. When these are lifted, the boards will be required to follow all aspects of Open Meetings Act, including publicly noticed and accessible locations. We do not yet know when this will happen or if any changes in the law will occur before that date. DCA will do all it can to assist the boards and bureaus to transition safely and with enough time to plan for in-person meetings. Also, many boards and bureaus are looking ahead to what changes can be made permanent for efficiency and employee well-being 
such as eliminating paper processes and maximizing telework where appropriate. I encourage all members and the public to visit BCA's COVID-19 webpage for updates and resources on the state's reopening plan, public health guidance, vaccinator resources, vaccine distribution, and more. Finally, a reminder about required trainings for board members. 2021 is a mandatory sexual harassment prevention training year. This means all employees and board members are required to complete the training during this year. As a reminder, newly appointed and reappointed board members are required to attend board member orientation training within a year of appointment or reappointment. DCA is excited about the new and improved training, which has been updated based on board member feedback and requests we've received. The next training will be held on June 23rd via WebEx, and then thereafter, the final scheduled training for 2021 will be October 13th. To register, you can visit DCA's Board Member Resources Center located on DCA's website, which is dca.ca.gov. I'd like to close by just reminding that, as always, Board and Bureau Relations is here to help you and your board, and if there's anything we can do to assist you, please reach out to us. We'll be happy to help. And that concludes my presentation, and I will hand it back over to Board President Mountain. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are there any questions from the board for Ms. Miller? Seeing no questions, we will move on to item eight, which is the licensing division report. And Ms. Brown will provide this report. Oops, sorry. Hello. Um, the licensing division report is included in your packet. Um, does anyone have any questions? All right, well, if there are no questions, um, I'd like to introduce um, one of our amazing licensing supervisors, Ivan Brent. Um, he will talk to you a little bit about some of the things that have been going on um, in the licensing division. Um, so take it away, Ivan. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Um, first thing I wanted to talk about was our verification project. Previously, we only had five regulatory bodies participate in receiving uh, verification of licensures um, via email. Since then, we have reached out to all 50. 50 bodies, and now we have 42 out of 50 participating. And this will save our board on an average of $1,000 a year, not to include paper, envelopes, ink, or duplicate verifications mailed. We also created an in-depth customer service training, um, which we focused on office etiquette de-escalation techniques, as well as conflict resolution tactics. Um, it's now required for all new staff, um, and it's also used as an annual refresher for the remaining members. We also held a team goal if we could um, keep our phone stats at 90% or higher for two consecutive weeks, uh, which we did reach our goal and we celebrated with um, some barbecued street tacos as well as some music um, all held outside. And since then we've obtained 90% or higher for 65 consecutive work days. Um, we also began an employee recognition program in March and we've been giving out employee of the month as well as um, special achievement awards. So each month we select two individuals from our unit and we give out $10 gift cards every month to the two winners. Um, and some final notes is our, our unit's been doing um, really, really well. Our processing times are down as well as our call volume. And that's what I have. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? Seeing none, are there any, is there any public comment? I see none. Thank you. Um, item 8B is the licensing and evaluations committee report and Ms. Carpenter will provide the report. Actually, I have no report because we did not meet, but I would certainly welcome another committee member since to date it's only been myself. Um, I would also like to 
give kudos to the entire licensing team. I mean, it's just a group of rock stars. Thank you all. Thank you. Board members, please raise your hands if you have any questions or comments on the licensing committee report. Is there any public comment? I see none. Thank you so much. Um, item nine is a legislative and regulations committee report. Mr. Durking, will you provide this report? Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. The Ledge Reg Committee met uh, March 11th and March 6th. Um, our EO uh, reported uh, as part of her presentation on the Nurse Compact Bill AB 410 that continues to be work in progress. It's projected to be moved uh, to early next year in the legislature. Uh, there's just two bills I'd like to highlight here. One is AB 1273. Information was included as part of the board pack meeting packet. Uh, this is the Interagency Advisory Committee on Apprenticeship, the Director of Consumer Affairs and the State Public Health Officer. The impact of this bill would be to expand uh, what they refer to as earn and learn opportunities, apprenticeship programs. And the uh, author says this will help connect workers with employers, especially during a time as we've seen in the past year when healthcare workers are, are desperately needed um, in allied health occupations. Uh, it's a, a critical need. It's, it uh, is intended to uh, address a vacuum in it, these transitional programs uh, like apprenticeship programs. And this really appears to me to be a subject matter, especially of interest to the BVNPT. Uh, at some point, uh, just to let you know, we might wish to take a formal position on this bill as we wind through the committee and board process. Um, the second bill is AB 2138. That's the substantial relationship and rehabilitation criteria, criteria for uh, VNs and uh, PTs and provides a modified proposed text. This bill, once again, it re the intent is to reduce barriers to uh, licensure for individuals with prior criminal convictions by limiting the board's authority to deny a new license application in cases where the applicant was formally convicted of a substantially related crime or subjected to formal discipline by a licensing board with offenses older than seven years uh, no longer eligible for license denial. And there are certain enumerated exemptions uh, in the bill. Uh, at the meeting, Ms. Pierce reported that the VN package requires board approval of the modified proposed text as received from DCA Legal on April 1st. Um, this should be uh, ready for us, is my understanding, uh, probably by next month uh, for our review. And then uh, we received an update on the program pass rate standards for VNs, which continues to be a hot area. And then finally, uh, regarding cosmetic procedures by VNs, uh, the EO reported that the legislature is aware that the board is seeking a uh, statutory authority to prohibit the, the practice of cosmetic treatments uh, by VNs. Uh, other than that, I would defer to uh, Ms. Yamaguchi for a follow-up, especially with regards to the uh, sunset bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, right, just to just to follow up a, a tiny bit because I think you covered everything. Um, the sunset bill, as I said earlier, is headed off to the Senate, where we we do expect to have a, a number of discussions and, and uh, put in the policy changes that we want to see. I think at some point we will probably ask um, the president to come and probably testify uh, before either a committee or or to, we would certainly be putting together some correspondence with regard to the uh, AB 2138. Um, I, I think um, just to clarify what Mr. Deerkin was saying, uh, yeah, this is this has been a long story for us, as you know, and um, so. I really do want the board to be aware that we are making progress in getting these these um, regulations moved forward and and finally approved. So and and my hats are off to uh, 
our council to Ms. Peers, and um, and and generally speaking to to our 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 colleagues at the OAL who have been providing some some expert counsel on that. Um, with that, let me just pass it back to you, Mr. Deer King. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have uh, the legislative updates attached. The 2021 uh, rulemaking calendar. Uh, we talked about the update. And then the continuing education provider conflict of interest policy. My understanding is that uh, DCA would like a broader uh, uh, policy that would apply to all boards uh, and bureaus under their jurisdiction. So if, there, if there's any questions, we'll be happy to take them. I see no questions at this time, but that was an excellent report. Thank you so much. Thank you very uh, much. That concludes our report, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, are there any public comments? I see none at this time. Thank you so much. Then we will move on to item 10A, which is the enforcement division report. Ms. Wood, would you please provide this report? Yes, hello. Um, you should all have the enforcement division report. I will go over a couple of quick highlights. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, we have a staff returning June 3rd from contact tracing. That still leaves us one staff short. Um, we have interviews scheduled for June 3rd and the candidates are selected and have um, reserved their times with us. So we have to hope to have that position filled quickly. Um, we are still working on case closure efficiencies and streamlining processes, and we're conducting some in-house audits to ensure that um, our case closures are being done perfectly. Any questions? I see no questions from the board members. Are there questions from the public? I see none at this time. Thank you so much. Um, item 10B is the enforcement committee report. Mr. Maxey, will you please provide this report? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, couple points. Um, the enforcement committee reviewed the petitioner hearing process with the enforcement division. Um, it was noted that the enforcement division had initially sent 60 petitions over to the office of the administrative hearings. Um, multiple hearings have been heard and have come back from for board vote. As of now, the board members have not voted to non adopt any of the administrative law judges decisions. Um, that's the second point. And then two more points. Um, since the board approved sending the petitioner hearings to the OEH, an additional nine petitions have come in, bringing the total to 69. Um, during the discussion with the committee, it was determined that we do not have a sufficient amount of information, completed hearings and board votes to make a specific and narrowly uh, tailored pro programmatic decision. The, the committee has determined that we will be collecting data for the next year. And once the data is collected, we will make a decision based on that information. That concludes my report, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Are there any questions from the board? Yes, yes, this is John Turner. Um, could you clarify that last part, um, collecting data for a year? I mean, so is it the, in I'm not sure I understand. Is it the intention that we're going to continue sending these uh, decisions over for a year and we'll collect data on it? Or are you, could you explain that? That is my understanding, Ms. Woods. Hi, yes. So um, when we reviewed the, the few decisions we got back, we realized that a significant portion um, of the things that we have sent over have not gotten back to us yet. So we wanted to make sure that when we advise the um, executive and full board that we have a good set of data in which to discuss. So we'll have a multitude of cases with a variety of allegations concerns and issues. So we really wanted to give the board the best advice we could. So we want to have a breadth and depth of cases so that we can narrowly tailor our advice to you. And that advice relates to whether we'll continue referring them the cases out or whether 
Yes, that is correct. So um, once we get the information we need, we would go ahead and um, put the data together, and then we would offer the executive or the enforcement committee. I'm sorry, would offer um, a couple of different recommendations potentially based on what we get back, and then the board would be voting on a decision on whether or not to continue this process moving forward or to end the process and change it to a different process. So it's anticipated that we will continue this for a year, referring cases out for a year. That is correct. And and so far you found that it's necessary to refer, we have such a great backlog that it is necessary to refer our board decisions out for a year. So we continue to have more and more petitions come in. Um, we have, had gotten nine completed petitions sent over. Um, unfortunately, not every petitioner sends the correct packet with all of the information in the first time. Oftentimes we have to work with them to get their packets in. So um, between what we've sent over and then what we possibly have waiting in the queue, we would be immediately overwhelmed again. I see. Have any further questions? Thank you. Thank you. Are there any public comments? I see none this time. Thank you. Item 11 is public comment on items not on the agenda. Are there any public comments? Right. Um, since there are no public none. comments, we'll move on to item 12, suggestions for future agenda items. Ms. Yamaguchi. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, I, I do have one suggestion and um, and I, you know, I, I sort of regret to to ask you this in this way. Uh, there are going to be a number of, of both legislative and rulemaking um, action items that we'll need to, to put before the board for a final disposition and so right now we're looking at um asking for a special meeting on june 24th we already had the um the legend regs committee scheduled to do so so at this point in time i just wanted to, to flag that for your attention um most likely in the middle to the late afternoon um and and just to be able to you know provide you with, with a little bit you know of, of advance notice um, we'll certainly be following up with, with the definite plan, but um, these include um, the regulatory packages for AB 2138, the uh, the NCLEX, NCLEX passage uh, rate rulemaking, um, possibly AB 1273, and possibly our sunset bill. So, um, like I said, I, 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 this isn't an action item, but this is just kind of a, an early warning and, and suggestion for the board members. Madam Chair. Thank you. Are there any other suggestions for future agenda items? Hi, yes, uh, this is Melissa Rubicava. I had um, wanted to bring up that maybe we can definitely round table something in related uh, something in relation to COVID administration. Um, as it stands right now, psych techs are not allowed to administer the COVID vac uh, vaccination um, unless they are in a healthcare facility or a developmental center. And unfortunately, um, in our communities and our underserved areas, this kind of puts a damper on getting that vaccine out to um, our California residents. So I just kind of wanted to bring that up to maybe, I don't know if we can talk about it at a later time, but um, Definitely wanted to um, assist the public in that way, uh, especially with our PTs that are wanting uh, to serve their communities and work in the communities. I think that's an excellent point. Thank you so much. Are there any other uh, possible future agenda items? Are there any public comments at this time? 
I see no public comments. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to the members of the audience and the staff. And I ask that you sign out at this point. I Madam will remove Chair. everybody from the room yes. and close the lock the meeting. Excuse me. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I'm advised that we have no matters for closed session, so the board will not need to retire to closed session. Excellent. Then I assume that we can do item 16, which is meeting adjournment. That's correct. Thank you so much.